Imagine if I told you there is a chemical in your brain quietly choosing your path, pursuing your passion or getting stuck on TikTok. In this video, we'll explore dopamine, the molecule that fuels desire, rewards habits, and manipulates your attention. We'll dig into what dopamine truly is, beyond the pleasure chemical myth, of course. You'll learn how it reinforces behaviors, links to your decision-making center, and keeps you hooked. Evolution gave us the system for survival. Now corporations use it to hijack your attention and data. By the end, you'll see your brain and your choices differently. In a world obsessed with engagement, we'll talk about how to win back your focus. Dopamine has a reputation, but most people misunderstand it. It's not the chemical of pleasure, it's the chemical of pursuit. Dopamine isn't pleasure, it's prediction. It drives your brain's what-if engine, pushing you to act on potential rewards it's a key neurotransmitter in learning, habit formation, and drive. Your brain doesn't wait until you're rewarded to release dopamine. It spikes when a reward seems possible, but dopamine isn't working alone. It has a partner, the prefrontal cortex. Think of it as the wise strategist, planning, prioritizing, keeping impulses in check, more like the CEO of the brain. Together, they form a powerful duo, Dopamine brings the spark, the sense of urgency, the need to act. The prefrontal cortex charts the path, deciding what's worth pursuing and how to get there. It's an engine constantly running, one that can drive you to remarkable achievements or just easily pull you into an endless loop of distraction. To understand how dopamine became the steering wheel of our behavior, we need to go back, way back. Millions of years ago, when survival meant finding food, escaping predators, and seeking shelter. Evolution didn't design the dopamine system to make us happy. It designed it to make us act. Dopamine became the brain's way of saying that thing that you just did, do it again and again and again. It's not about pleasure. It's about reinforcement. It's about reward prediction, learning what leads to good outcomes and what doesn't. Every time a hunter-gatherer found a fruit tree or avoided a predator, dopamine helped wire their brain to remember and repeat that behavior. This reinforcement system was adaptive, of course. It made us smarter, more efficient, more motivated. It helped us survive. But here's the twist. The same system that helped us thrive in the wild can now be hijacked. Now, here's where it gets wild. The same dopamine system that evolution gave us to survive is now being exploited to sell you things, steal your time, and track your every move. Modern capitalism figured out that the best way to sell a product is to sell a feeling, a tiny spike in dopamine. And that spike doesn't have to be big, just enough to make you click, scroll, swipe, again and again and again. Big tech studied your brain. They mapped where your dopamine rises, what you click, what you pause on, how long your thumb hesitates, and with billions of data points, they engineered platforms designed not to inform you, but to capture you. So here's a cool thought experiment. If one day AI and advanced dopamine tracking tools enable us to define a precise metric a kind of neuroattention index that captures dopamine spikes, time investment and cognitive engagement on a large collective scale, if they're not already doing it, we may uncover deep guiding correlations between that index and the world's most powerful industries. It would be like discovering a map, a life dynamic map showing how influence flows, how attention is monetized and how behavior is shaped. We might even gain the ability to forecast the next cultural wave or behavioral shift before it happens. Now consider this. In 2024, over 1.5 billion people spend an average of 95 minutes a day on a single platform. TikTok, amounting to more than 271,000 years of collective human attention every day. This means every day TikTok users spend enough attention to cover the entire time span between us and ancient Egypt, nearly 58 times over. 
If Future AI can map this vast ocean of focus to real-time neural responses, it won't just reveal what is trending. It could predict what we're about to desire, believe, or fear. With that kind of predictive power, governments may stop viewing social media as entertainment and start seeing it as a tool of persuasion, influence, and even destabilization. In such a world, algorithms, the stream of data they feed on, become strategic assets or national threats. It all depends on who controls them. And by the way, while I'm making this video, Donald Trump is negotiating to buy TikTok. So your attention became a product, your behavior became a pattern, and your dopamine system, just another switch to flip. Everything on your screen, the feet, the buzz, the ping is engineered for one goal, keep you engaged because more engagement means more time, more time means more ads, more ads, more profit, and every second you're handing over your data freely, quietly. It's not personal, it's business, but it feels personal because it happens in the most personal place, your mind. What once helped us survive now traps us in a loop chasing likes novelty tiny bursts of reward and the cost not just your attention but your time your focus your clarity and the freedom to choose where your mind goes so am i saying we should cancel social media ban algorithms erase dopamine no not at all i'm not anti-tech i'm not anti-dopamine i'm not even anti-algorithm i'm pro-choice your choice because you should be the one deciding where your focus goes what habits you build what you give your mind to but ask yourself are you really the one deciding if your attention is being steered by invisible forces nudged without your consent designed for someone else's profit then who is driving your brain this isn't about banning technology it's about becoming more aware understanding your mind better because once you understand how the system works you can learn to work with it instead of being worked by it that's what this channel is for mind inform is here to put you back in the driver's seat of your brain so now that we get kind of what's going on what do we do about it here's the truth you're not helpless you shape your dopamine system every day by what you do what you consume and what you repeat. You're the conductor here. Your choices are the instruments. And balance is the goal. Like a conductor of an orchestra, you have the power to manage your dopamine system to a certain degree, to bring it into balance instead of letting it spiral out of control. Let's ground this in two key principles. First, if dopamine spikes too hard via doom scrolling, junk food, porn, or constant novelty, it drops even lower afterward. That's why you feel empty and drained. Second, the goal isn't to be hyped all the time. The goal is to keep dopamine steady, in the optimal zone. This is the sweet spot. This sweet spot is known as the inverted U-curve. Too little dopamine? You struggle with focus, energy, and motivation. Classic ADHD-like symptoms. Excess dopamine can lead to overstimulation, heightened anxiety, and cognitive rigidity. Patterns that may resemble anxiety disorders, but in the middle, when dopamine is just right, you hit peak performance. Balance attention, flexible thinking, motivation, clarity, and kind of enjoying your life. And the good news? You can train your brain to live in that zone. It starts by giving your system exactly what it's designed to thrive on. You don't need hacks. You need what your body is always known. Luckily, your brain already knows how to regulate dopamine if you give it the right inputs. Here are five science-backed ways to naturally boost your dopamine and stay in the optimal zone. First, exercise. Regular physical activity increases dopamine production and receptor sensitivity, improving mood, motivation, and brain function. Second, cold exposure. Cold showers or ice baths can increase dopamine by up to 250%, leading to greater alertness, energy, and emotional resilience. Third, good sleep. Sleep quality keeps your dopamine receptors healthy, which is critical for motivation and emotional regulation. Sleep isn't just rest, it's neurochemical reset. Fourth, sunlight exposure. Sunlight naturally stimulates dopamine release, helping stabilize your mood and energy levels. Just 10 to 30 minutes of real sunlight can make a measurable difference. Fifth, meditation. Mindfulness and meditation help regulate
regulate dopamine circuits and reduce stress, which protects your prefrontal cortex from burnout. With regular practice, your baseline dopamine becomes more stable, not constantly swinging highs and crashes. Once you understand how to create healthy sources of dopamine, it becomes easier to recognize and reduce the ones that drain you. That's not restriction, that's freedom. You're not cutting dopamine, you're reclaiming it. You're learning to ride the wave, not to be dragged by it. And that is how you get back in control with a lot of effort and consistency. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe. If not, that's totally okay. Your attention means a lot.